As a top style player in both jujitsu and in the bedroom, I'm used to using fast finishes and lots of pressure to get the job done. But when it comes to being on the bottom, I'm lost like a pirate with no map and no ship, just doggy paddling and inevitably drowning. That's why I'm dedicating one session per week to play guard only in every round that I roll. This is the guard diaries and stay tuned to watch me test out my guard against a high level black belt. The truth is I have a lot of great sweeps and attacks from all kinds of different guards, but I struggle to actually get into position to pull them off. So for the first episode, I want to focus on setting up my guard in the gi because I've been known in the past to just flop on my back with no plan whatsoever and just hope that I end up in a guard. And in studying some of the best guard athletes in the world, I've noticed a few key trends that I want to implement into my game so that I can become an elite bottom player as well. And the first step that I need to work on that makes every wrestler cringe into oblivion is guard pulling. The first thing I noticed watching the best guard pullers in the world is that they secure grips with both hands before actually pulling. This allows them to pull their opponents around and breaks their posture by forcing them to carry their own weight while leaving them open to be swept or off balance. The second thing I noticed is that they quickly engage their feet to create even more openings and manipulation. By combining the pull of their upper body grips and the push of the frame that they make with their legs and feet, there's a tight tension that good guard players produce that makes their guards super stable from the jump. And the third foundational principle that I noticed watching good guard players is that they maintain strong angles with their limbs and body positioning to not be put into a vulnerable position to be passed. With the right angling, good guard players recover their guards so easily just by making tiny movements to reposition. And to boot, they know when to abandon a guard once all hope is lost, either coming up for a takedown or scrambling out. Now of course there are many many other aspects of being a good guard player and these are just three that scratch the surface. And I think these would be a good start to focus on on my journey to becoming a guard master. So with these three key principles in mind, I took to rolling and started off my rounds with lower belts, working my way up to training with my black belt professor. For the first round against a white belt training partner, I was able to start the round off with a quick guard pull. For simplicity in this session, I decided I'd be sticking with a color sleeve guard pull all the way through each round because I find it's a very dynamic gripping sequence with a lot of options. Watching an elite guard puller like Nicholas Marigali, who uses the color sleeve better than almost anyone, I noticed he wastes no time securing his grips at the start of a match. Take a look at this match with Tynan Duarte where Marigali looks to set his grips and fails, so he disengages and tries again, only pulling guard once he fully has both the collar and sleeve grip secured. In Marigali fashion, I fully secured both a strong collar and sleeve grip before pulling guard and took care of principle number one. My opponent and I were just warming up so it made it easy for me to also take care of principle number two, engaging my legs, and number three were using my upper and lower body controls, I took an advantageous angle, quickly getting under my opponent and setting up one of my favorite X card entries, shelving his leg on my shoulder. And this is really where I've been struggling to get to because once I'm here, I feel pretty comfortable. I'm able to get the sweep and finish with an armbar, but that's not what I want to focus on. We were resetting from bottom position, and again, I focused on my principles, where I ended up with what I think could be the ideal position that any guard player can hope to end up in. And that's right where the stars aligned perfectly. I had tight collar sleeve grips, strong legs framing, and I was off-centering my opponent with the tension I was creating on both sides of his body. And with all this manipulation, he was being pulled forward, overreaching in a very vulnerable position, to be swept, for me to throw a triangle, to be off-balance, to be elevated, pretty much anything I wanted to do here I could have. But like I mentioned before, we were still warming up with this first round of the day, so neither one of us was going too crazy hard, and I was able to sweep with a triangle and finish once again with an armbar. Now for the second round of the day, I made quite a big jump in level all the way to a purple belt and he had quite a bit of size on me. But the plan stayed the same because I want to be able to pull guard and feel comfortable against opponents of all sizes and skill levels. I went back to my collar and sleeve grips and pulled right back shooting my feet to my opponent's hips to try and create a strong angle and pull myself underneath him. But I realized here that I really telegraphed my guard pull and he fully saw it coming. He was one step ahead of me catching my right foot before I could set it and stuffed it down between his legs and dropped into an over under pass. As good big jiu jitsu players do, he used his pressure to create an opening, got to mount and although I fought him off for quite a while, he finished me with a head and arm choke. After a reset in our second engagement, he used a different strategy gripping both of my pant sleeves, keeping his hips away so I couldn't engage my legs at all, and walked around my guard into another pass. I survived his mount the second time and after a third try at playing guard, I finally learned my lesson. When he pulled his hips away, I scooted in closer to prevent him from getting away. And when he tried to stuff my leg down, I lassoed my leg over top to prevent him from breaking my guard, 
but the buzzer went and the round had ended. Even though I couldn't do anything and set up a guard like I could in the first round, I learned something and made notes to set up for in the future. Next up, we moved along to my round against a brown belt partner, and I was back to the same grips. In a similar way to the previous round, he was trying to stuff and step over my leg, but I was able to stay underneath his center of gravity and sweep over the top. Obviously against a bigger opponent, this is going to be way harder to do, and in this case, I was the bigger guy. But he's a brown belt for a reason, and swept me with an arm crunch coming on top and subbing me. Upon reset, we ended up in the exact same situation where I got my sweep again and tried to avoid post with the exact same arm and getting shoulder crunched. I ended up on top, worked some passes, and we did some leg fighting until I finally ended up where I wanted to, working my guard. This time I was setting up a De La Hiva, but got really lazy, especially when it came to principles number two and three. I disengaged my De La Hiva hook and looked to reset my offside foot at the same time, which left me with only two points of contact, which were my hands. At the same time, it was clear that he was going to pass into a leg drag, and I was just a second late on abandoning the guard and getting away in time, so he was able to catch my back. Knowing when to scramble out or re-guard when things are not going well is something that I definitely need to get better at and will definitely focus on it on another episode. Finally, to end the round, I escaped my partner's mount into De La Hiva guard and grabbed his far leg to hit a tabletop sweep. And I must be insane because I made the same mistake posting my hand on the mat, falling right into the shoulder crunch sweep that Greg hits so quickly as the round came to an end. Insanity is doing the exact same fucking thing over and over again, expecting shit to change. So now we finally made it to the black belt rounds, and immediately the level of passing is just different. I couldn't hold off my professor's passes, and even though I kept my feet and grips engaged, he was just too tricky with the angles, nullifying my attempts to lift him or off balance. Eventually I looked to set up a single leg X, but he was one step ahead of me, backstepping while I was too committed to my grips, which caused me to face plant into what I like to call the face down and ass up guard. I survived his mounted triangle attack, sneaking out the back, but I ended up on bottom and was not prepared for this situation. Because I'd been working on pulling guard where I already had my grip set, this mid-distance guard situation where I didn't have any grips at all made me look like a lost puppy, and this is another area that I definitely want to focus on in another episode. Cause here I was just easily passed before trying to set up any grips at all. I inverted to come up and looked for a cradle, but the sneaky black belt moves didn't stop here. My professor grabbed my back leg and came up into a dogfight, but this leg trap made it easy for him to shrug me off and send me back down. I survived another mount attack, kipping out into single leg X and sweeping, looking to pass again, but this time with a long step. But again, my main goal was to work my guard here, so I set my grips and re-pulled. I countered a bolo, ending up in X guard and almost took his back, ending up in side control, and just when I was starting to feel good on top, I was flipped over my coach's head and humbled once again when the round came to an end. We chatted for a while going into the next round and decided to finish up the last few minutes and I'm glad because I successfully pulled off pretty much exactly what my game plan was for the day. I set my grips, engaged my legs, secured a strong angle, all attributing to my X guard control, preventing my partner from backstepping, and pulled off my cleanest sweep for two points from a guard pull of the entire day, and this happened to be against my toughest opponent. And this moment right here made all the punishment I received right after doing this so, so worth it. To be honest, I think that was actually the pivotal moment of the match. In conclusion, I think that practicing my guard pull will be super important because it'll make it a habit of securing as many things as I can before going to the ground. And it'll mitigate the risk of being passed quickly, which is where all bottom players go to die against good wrestlers. I still have a long way to go on my journey to becoming a good guard player, and I think in the next episode I want to focus on guard recovery and retention. Because I find that once I start to lose my positioning against high level opponents, I panic a little bit and struggle to get anything back. And so many good grapplers out there have unpassable guards that I myself would like to replicate. So I'm gonna hit the film study hard, get some new tactics, and I'll see you in the next one. Also hit the like button if you're excited for this series.